Blessed mighty name. Please, you can be seated. God bless you. Thank God you are in church this morning. I want to thank God for the gift of life. I want to thank God for each and every one of you seated here. God has a purpose why you're still here. And that purpose you will fulfill. In the name of Jesus. No one will take your place. I said no one will take your place. No one will complete that which you have started in the name of Jesus. Thank you, sweet Holy Ghost. I have a topic with me this morning that says the covenant law and power of sowing deliberate seeds. The covenant laws and power of sowing deliberate seeds. Sweet Holy Ghost, I need you to speak to your people. And let them hear you loud and clear. In the name of Jesus. We are taking our theme text from the book of 2 Corinthians. Chapter number 9, verse 6 to 10. Please, I need the living Bible. Second Corinthians, chapter number 9, verse 6 to 10. The living, the living Bible. The living Bible, not new living. You don't have the living Bible there? 
Okay, you can give me the New Living Translation. If you don't have the Living Bible, can you give me the New Living Translation? The New Living... Okay. Remember this. A farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. Please, I want you to pay attention and read with me. But the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must... You must, you must each make up your own mind. You will not come and make up my mind for me. You make up your own mind as to how much you should give. Don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves the person who gives cheerfully and God will generously provide all you need then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others as the scriptures say Godly people give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will never be forgotten. Verse number 10. For God is the one who gives seeds to the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will give you many opportunities to do good as he will produce a great harvest of generosity in you give me Galatians chapter number 6 verse 7 to 9 Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 to 9 don't be misled Remember that you can't ignore God and get away with it. Don't be misled. You cannot pr uh, pray or play, sorry, sorry about that. You cannot play nyanky panky with God and go away with it. God is somebody we need to be careful with each time we are dealing with him. You see, most times when you are giving, you thought you are giving to some other person. You don't have it at the back of your mind that whatever you are giving to some other person, you are first giving it to God. If you forget to see the next person you're giving whatever thing you're giving to and see God then you will give with respect remember that you can't ignore God and get away with it you will always reap what you sow praise the name of the Lord let's de define some terms here what is the word deliberate Deliberate is to think about or discuss issues and decisions carefully. You are not jumping into it in a hurry. You carefully sit on it. You think through where whether you should take the decision that you are about to take. I pity people who just jump to give whenever they hear giving. Because most times they don't get an answer. They don't get a reward. They didn't sit on it. 
this giving, what should I tie it to? Am I late to give or I'm pressurized because the man of God is standing on the pulpit and is rendering sweet words and you're just pushed to give? You didn't sit on it to so think carefully. Something done consciously and intentionally. You have to consider the reasons for or against anything you are about to do you do it carefully you are not in a hurry to take that steps let me shock you deliberate seeds produces long term significant harvest that will last a lifetime let me make you hear it again I say deliberate seed the seed that you sit on it, you think through, the one you are not pushed, you are not forced to take that step you are about to take, the one that you sit and you know the reason why you should do what you are doing, deliberate seeds, such seeds, they produce long-term, significant harvest that will last a lifetime. It will transcend you to your generations yet unborn. Those are the kind of seed we are talking about this morning. And then we will look at people who sowed those kind of seeds in the Bible. The people we are following, the people we are actually looking after. The people that sowed the seeds in the Bible. The children of Israel sowed such seeds in the book of Exodus chapter number 35 verses number 1 down. a long scripture but I will just take it in a bit now Moses called a meeting of all the people and told them you must obey these instructions from the Lord give me verse number 3 verse number 2 3 please media can we can we go together Each week, praise the name of the Lord. I don't want to be disappointed. Let me do it myself. Each week we work for six days only. The seventh day is a day of total rest, a holy day that belongs to the Lord. Anyone who works on that day will die. If you read down, you will discover that in the scripture, the Lord gave them instructions and didn't force them. And if you read down in verse number, in verse number, Four. Verse number four, please give me verse four. Then Moses said to all the people, This is what the Lord has commanded. Give me verse number 20 and 20, 20 to 22. Moses gave them what God said. He told them, This is what God says. So all the people left Moses and went to their tent to prepare their gifts. If you read in New Living Translation, you will hear that they slept over it. It was not that same day that they took the decision of giving. So they took time to think on what they should give. God has asked us to give. What should we give that will be presentable? What should we give that will bring blessings to all, to us? What should we give that we will end up enjoying God's blessings throughout our lifetime? They didn't just hurry into it. They went home and slept over it. And they begin to pick the things that they wanted to give. Verse number 20, 21 says, If their hearts were stayed, 
and their desire and their desire to do so they brought to the Lord their heart was stayed and they desire to do it willingly they were not forced in the confine of their homes and houses they desire to do so and so because they desire to do so they brought to the Lord their offerings of materials for the tabernacle and its furnishings for the holy garments because they decided because they thought through because they looked at it and they knew that it was well this is this is a perfect game let's go into it let's do it and that is when they made up their mind to do it both men and women came all whose hearts were willing people who give deliberately are people who give with a willing heart people who give with a willing heart are people who give deliberately some brought to the Lord their offerings of gold whatever thing they gave whether it was gold, silver, bronze they gave with a willing heart and most of, most of the times where you are not giving is because you think you have 100 naira if you have 100 naira and you give that 100 naira with a willing heart it is accepted by God if you have 1000 naira and you give 100 naira out of 1000 naira and you are giving that 1000 or one, that 100 naira because you want people to see that you are giving because most times you know in marvels we package our offering we have offering envelopes so you have a 1,000 naira, you have 100 naira, and you have 50 naira, and you look for the lowest denomination and you put in the envelope. You're giving just because you don't want to be passed by and that you're not putting something in the basket. You're not giving because you understand giving. You're not giving because you have made up your mind to give. You're giving it as a show. You have to begin to have this mindset that in giving, you must be deliberate about it. So these people understood the meaning of giving and they did it deliberately. Another person that did so was Abraham. Abraham in the book of Genesis chapter number 22 Genesis chapter number 22 verses 2 take your son your only son yes Isaac whom you love so much and go to the land of Moriah sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains which I will point out to you this is God talking to Abraham. Give me verse number three. The next morning, God spoke to him like today. Abraham didn't hurriedly take his son. He didn't move that day. He slept over it. It was the next morning that Abraham got up early. All through the night, he has taken his mind day. He has looked at it. He has asked himself questions on how he's going to go about it. So he took a deliberate, a deliberate step of taking his son. He had concluded within his mind that whatever happens, I'm giving my son as a sacrifice. He as a human would have just said, God, I've heard you. But this is an impossible task I won't be able to do and you know God he won't kill him it was a choice whether to accept what God says or not to just as we do this days that sometimes God will speak to us and we look at that thing and he said no God this one is no I don't think you are the one speaking 
especially when it has to do with some figures that you're looking at. You say, no, no, this one I would have used it for business. I'm not sure. It's my mind that is telling me. It's the flesh. And you begin to rebuke that. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Get thee beside me. It's not the Lord that is speaking to me. Because the Lord knows very well that I want to use this income for this particular project. He could as, as well do that. And tell the Lord, you can't be that wicked. Did, you, did it not take you how many years to give me this only child? Why are you now demanding for this only child that I have gotten in the entire world? I should go and sacrifice him and be childless forever? God, you are wicked. I don't think you are the one speaking. He would have rebuked the voice and tell the voice to get thee behind him. But he sat throughout the night and thought through and decided to take a deliberate step the following morning. And he took the son, took some servants and went. And you know, how inquisitive some children will be. Daddy, look at the, the firewood. We have everything to set fire. Where is that sacrifice? And he said, don't bother about that. God will provide. Verse number 11 to 14. 11 to 14. Glory to Jesus. At that moment, the angel of the Lord shouted to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, yes. He answered, I'm listening. Lay down the knife, the angel said. Do not hurt the boy in any way. For now I know. For now I am sure. Now I'm certain that you really love me. For taking this very act, you have sacrificed him already. Because you thought through, you would have denied me. But for taking this step, there's no need for you to... I don't need him to be sacrificed. I just needed to know who you are. I needed to know whether you are professing me with your lips only. I wanted to know the level of love you have for me. Don't hurt the boy. Let him go. Look beside you. There is a sacrifice waiting. I don't need sacrifice of human beings. I needed to test your love for me. Praise the name of the Lord. He took a deliberate step. He gave Isaac deliberately. He gave him deliberately. The king of Moab, my sister did mention this when she was talking to us on Wednesday. Second Kings chapter number 3 verse 24 to 27. Glory to Jesus. Second Kings chapter 3, verse 24. These two cities went into war. And the Moabites were defeated. They brought, them, they brought in some, some measures to see how they can, they can conquer the children of Israel. But they were still defeated. When they arrived at the, at the Israelite camp, the army of the Israel rushed out and attacked the Moabites, who turned and ran. The army of Israel chased them into the land of Moab, destroying everything as they went. They destroyed the city, covered their good land with stones, stopped up the springs, and cut down the good trees. Finally, only Kahareset was left, but even that came under attack. Everything they own. When the king of Moab saw that, this thing didn't happen in a day. All this we are reading in one verse didn't happen in a day. He took a process of time. And when he looked at it, he said, what else would I do? When the king saw this, he said, what will I offer that will bring a stop to what I'm seeing? And the king saw that he was losing the battle. He led 700 of his warriors in a desperate att attempt to break through the enemy lines near the king of Edom. But they fell. 
those were the last camp, the last battle. Uh, uh, what do they call them? Armies that were left. He sent even the last armies and they were attacked, they were destroyed totally. And he looked at it, he said, no, I won't allow this to happen. Verse number 27, so he took his oldest son, who would have been the next king, and sacrificed him as a burnt offering on the wall. As a result, the anger against Israel that the Lord was with was great. So they withdrew and returned to their own land. So the same God that was with the Israelites, when he saw the sacrifice of a man that was desperate, he turned against the same people he was protecting and he was for the Moabites. So, you're giving, you're, you're giving, your deliberate giving to God can turn the hand of God against your enemy. So it took this man to take this deliberate decision to conquer the war. If he didn't take this step, he wouldn't have gotten the victory he was waiting for. Most times when you, you are looking for something, you've prayed about it. You've worshipped God. Take another step to giving out something that will take the whole of you. Lay it at his feet. Something that you know within yourself that that is home and abroad. You don't even know how you're going to feed. I took my salary. Sorry, I'm not going to preach about myself. For December, I had some bills to pay. And the bills were over and over and over the amount I received. And I looked at it, I came to church, I was sitting down there. I wanted to make some transfer. I wanted to make, pay my tithe first. But I just heard in my spirit, drop it at his feet. I tapped pastor, I said, please, that, that church account, can you give it to me now? He did. That wasn't, I didn't plan to give that as a first fruit. I was thinking maybe at the end of January when I get my salary for January, I'll give God the first fruit. But it just dropped. A day before that day, my mom had called me for diaper. I had several bills. And I looked to the, that money in my account and I said, if I start transferring to these people, this, this money won't even be enough to pay all the bills I have on ground. So let me give it to God. I gave it to God not looking back because I knew very well on Monday work he started. And I didn't even have transport that I'm going to use to pay transport to work. But I gave it to him without looking back. Now tell me how God will not show up on my behalf. Tell me why this month or this year won't be abundance thrown out for me. Because I took my time, I thought over it. And I said it won't do all what I need to do. So I better give it out to God. When it is not enough for you to handle that project, then it is God's own. Sow it to him deliberately. Don't let someone preach you to doing it. Do it within your heart. A poor widow also did something like this. In the book of Mark chapter number 12, Verse number 41 to 43. A poor widow. Mark chapter number 12. 
the media people are born again in the name of Jesus Jesus then Jesus began telling them stories Media said 12, verse 41 to 43. Jesus went over to the collection box in the temple and sat and watched as the crowd dropped in their money. Many rich people put in large amount. Then a poor widow came and dropped in two pennies. He called his disciples to him and said, I assure you, this poor widow has given more than all the others have given. For they gave a tiny part of their surplus. But she, poor as she is, has given everything she has. We are not preaching you to give everything that you own. That is not why we are here. But we want you to give God something that this God deserves. Don't give God crumbs. Don't give God as if you're giving to a dog. If you look at yourself, you will see how faithful God has been. Many of you had not gone to the hospital from January till December last year. And you're still here. Go to the hospital and see what is happening there. Then you will know that when it's time for you to give to God, you should give to Him. Because you're not giving in the hospital, so why wouldn't you give to God? So, Jesus observed that this woman gave out of all that she had she gave a deliberate seed a willing seed something that broke her into pieces this is the last that I have but it's better given to God than to any man those are the kind of people we should learn from and now let me be let me be different from the usual this morning there are people that you must give to. I am no more Pastor Wisdom's wife as I'm standing here. I'm talking to you as God will lay in my heart to speak to you. I do not lack food to eat. God knows I don't. I can take care of myself comfortably and we can take care of our family comfortably. But if I refuse to tell you this, no limits, no boundaries, all things are possible will not be your experience this year. There are people that you must deliberately sow into their lives. One of them is your priest. Turn with me to the book of Galatians chapter number 6 and verse number 6. Limbarato Shanga Santa Nabarusi Telecaria Parusiata Libaranta Natu Zata Kesketa Labarusha Labarusa Talada. Those who are taught the word of God should help their teachers by paying them. Now, let me tell you, I am not telling you because I need your food, I am not telling you because I need your victuals. I am not telling you because I lack clothes to wear. But I'm, I've come this morning to tell you the truth. If you treat your priest the way you have been treating this year, you will not experience the kind of blessings. It will not be a season for you. They deserve to be paid. I didn't say so, God said so. They deserve to be paid. You are eating, you are enjoying in your different houses and you care less about your priest. You are missing out. If he stands out there and pronounce a blessing on you, you won't have it. Because you are not doing what is expected of you to do. Ezekiel chapter number 44 verse 30. 
English media, I want you to be fast with me. Then the man brought me back. 44 verse 30. The first of the ripe fruit and all the gifts brought to the Lord will go to the priest. The first sample of each grain harvest and the first of your floor must also be given to the priest. So the Lord will bless you your homes how many of us wants our homes to be blessed this year so that the Lord will bless your home so that the Lord will bless your home you are not giving to them so that they will live a robust life you are giving to them so that God will bless your home Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 13 to 14. Pastor Wisdom is this kind of person that will never tell you to give. Especially when it has to do with giving him. But I have to tell you the truth. If you want to experience no limits, no boundaries. You see them here? You need to deliberately sow into their life. Don't you know that those who walk in the temple get their meals from the food brought to the temple as offering? What if there is no meal brought into the temple? They will starve to death. What if you are not bringing the food? Don't you ever think that your offering and your tithe is being given to pastors? In marvels, we don't practice that. If you don't write a name and attach that this one goes to this person, it will never go to. Our offerings is for the light. You have light now in church. It's for the fear. It's for the maintenance. It's for paying of salaries. It's not for pastors. So if you refuse to bring the meal, if you refuse to bring the meal, they will starve to death. Yet they will still come up here and pronounce a blessing on you. Now tell me if you'll be blessed if they pronounce the blessing. And those who serve at the altar get a share of the sacrificial offerings. Those who serve at the altar. In the same way the Lord gave others that those who preach the good news should be supported by those who benefit from it. If you are benefiting from this gospel that we preach, it is expected that you support our ministry. If you are benefiting from it. If you are not benefiting from it, no problem. If you are not benefiting from it, there is no problem. We are not going to force you to do it. But if at all you are benefiting, you are to support them. Praise the name of the Lord. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 18. I have a long message but I will try to round it up here. I'll keep it for the next day when I'm given another opportunity. For the scripture says, do not keep an ox from eating as it treat out the grain. Give me in King, in King James. Give me in King James. If you have it in King James, don't muzzle the ox that traded out the corn and the laborer is worthy of his reward. A laborer is worthy of his reward. If they actually labor, if all those pastors are laboring in this vineyard, they deserve to be rewarded. They deserve to be rewarded. They deserve to be rewarded. Praise the name of the Lord. Matthew chapter number 10, verse number 40 to 42. Matthew chapter number 10, verse 40 to 42. Matthew 10, 40 to 42. He that received you, received me. 
And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that received a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. So there is a blessing attached to receiving a prophet. Even the Bible has said it, you will receive a prophet's reward. There is a reward for giving to your prophet, giving to your priest. And lastly, please, can you be on your feet? Philippians chapter number 4, verse number 17. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your accounts. This is why I said I should tell you. It's not that because Pastor Wisdom said I should talk about it, no. The pastors didn't come to a meeting and agree I should speak on this topic, no. Not that we desire to be given a gift, but something extraordinary that we are looking forward to seeing happen in your life this year is that your account may abound. It's that you will live in plenty. It's because you, we want you to begin to experience no limits, no boundaries as you move into this year. It's because we want you to see, to begin to experience that all things are possible to you this year. We want you to flourish on every side. We want you to flourish on every side. We want you to blossom on every side. We want you to begin to have a different experience from what you used to have. This is why I bring up this to you. Lift up your voice this morning and tell the Lord, Father, I've heard your word, but I need the grace to put this into practice. There's one thing to hear. There's another thing to begin to practice it. Because you may think she's just saying it. You may think it is not, it's not to me. They are not talking to me. So I want to carry the small that I have and give to pastor. Until I give them the small that I have. That is what will make him a pastor. You may begin to read meanings to it. But I want you to allow the Holy Ghost to speak through to you. Lift up your voice and tell him, Father, the grace. In the name of Jesus. We're still going to pray. But can we quickly see Second Chronicle? Chapter number 20, verse 20. Second Chronicle, chapter 20, verse 20. Second Chronicle, chapter 20, verse 20. Amen. And they arose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, bros and cease. Hear me, O marvels, and ye inhabitants of this ministry, believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophet over your life, the priest of God over your life, so shall ye prosper. God never said that your prosperity is tied to him. But he rather points to you where lies your prosperity. Your prosperity is in the hands of your pastors, the hands of your priests, the hands of your prophet. Take advantage of it and experience it. What did I say? And do what? And experience it. The ball is in your court. The goal is yours. You have the right to choose. You, have, you can do it deliberately and you can shun it. 
it lies within your hands. Nobody will beg you. Nobody will ask you. If you give me an opportunity, I'll rather give you the one I have. Because I understand the mystery of giving. Amen. Now we're showing you how we survive without a job, without salary. Yet it's flowing in. It's flowing in. It's sowing. Last November, or this November, we were saddled with the rent of this church we couldn't pay. I called her. And I called Bishop Yedeko's secretary and they sent me his direct account number. I called them. Um, And we shut down the accounts and we forward the money to those two accounts. There was no dime in the account. She knows what I'm talking about. She has to use her own phone to assess if those accounts were genuine accounts. And we transferred the money from the church account, everything there. And at the end of the day, in two weeks' time, thereafter, we had 200,000 naira cash to pay the account, to pay the rent. How much did we give? 40,000. But because it was done deliberately, it attracted a deliberate result. A key has been dropped in your hands. You can use it or you can throw it away. Ask God for the grace to obey Him. The grace to put to practice what you've been taught. Nobody will stand on this altar and raise money from you. We don't believe in it. Nobody will stand on this altar and say, who can give us 1,000, 2,000, 10,000, 50 come up? No! This pulpit is not meant for that. But you have been taught today. You can obey God's instruction, God's word, and experience God. Father, thank you. Thank you for your word that has come today. Thank you for your word that has come today. It might seem hard, but there lies a beautiful future. It might seem hard, but there lies a glorious life. It might seem hard, but there lies the abundance of all good things. Lord, thank you for moving us from the region of scarcity to the region of abundance of all things. No limits, no boundaries. All things are possible. And we're engaging the key that would deliver prosperity into our hands. Even the key of giving deliberately to you. Sowing deliberately and honoring the prophet of our lives in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.